Hi Titans, this project is using Final Cut and you can use this video to do the project called ABCs or the, your top 30. Um, both are very similar so the setup is basically the same. Uh, okay, so you have three choices. Um, an ABC project, a top 30 which is all one category that should be very broad meaning it's open, it's not very limited, um, and, or three so smaller categories each having 10 in them. So let me review these examples. So if you were to do, uh, I did classic games for my ABC and I'd recommend you do something big like movies, cartoon characters, um, Disney characters, car makes and models, uh, things that have to do with sports, stuff like that. Um, something that's very open because you're going to have to come up with one for every letter of the alphabet. Now that sounds easy if you're doing baseball, I'm sure, to think of like the ABCs of baseball. Until you get to letters like Q and X, uh, it's going to be difficult to do that, or Z, um, so or V, or U. So anyway, when you're, when you're doing them, you want to pick out things that have like a very open topic. So you don't want to do the characters in SpongeBob because there's probably only about 12 characters that you could think of their names. Um, and they'll have probably simple letters of the alphabet. They won't have the tougher ones. So you want to have a very broad topic. Unless you open it to maybe fantasy characters or sci-fi characters or animated characters, those are much more broad. So anyway, you want to get at least one picture from each of your different words. So for example, my first I did classic games and I got Arkanoid for A and Bonnet Commando for B and Contra for C and Donkey Kong for D and so on and I made sure to get every letter. Although I'm not quite finished yet as you can tell. When you're doing that by the way you may want to like rename them as you go to put them in alphabetical order because that'll save you some time and you just do that by selecting it, pressing return and then typing in the new uh, name. Um, so obviously this is Q for Qbert. Um, I'm going to go back for a minute though because I want to talk to you about the next option. So in that case, you're, when it was done, your project would be laid out so it showed a picture of whatever starts with A and it would say A is for Arkanoid, B is for Bionic Commando, etc. all the way through the alphabet without missing one letter. Your second option is to do 30 of um, another probably relatively broad topic but something that you like. Um, so I did comic book characters, and as you can see, I set up uh, my 30 different comic book characters, and I moved them to put them in the order that I want them to show up in my countdown. So this is number 30, 29, 28, 27, and so on throughout this whole list. Now sometimes I might have a tie or something like that, uh, and then I might have an area for honorable mentions, which I'm going to talk about in just a sec. Um, but you basically would want to have 30 in the same category. If you don't feel like you could come up with your 30 favorite athletes, then don't do a top 30. Divide your top 30 into three top 10s, which is the last option of the project. So for example, for my Disney movies, the first thing I did, and you should do this no matter what choice you make, is get an intro picture that's going to introduce your theme. Then you want the 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, in this case is a tie, 2 in this case is a tie, plus a PNG that I'm going to talk about in a different video, and uh, number 1. So here I have my honorable mentions because I just couldn't resist putting, naming some of these movies in here because they're favorites of mine, but they didn't quite make the top 10. So that's what all of this is, is made of. This is my top 10 for Disney. Now, because I chose top 10s, I have to do three of them to make it equal to my 30 or the alphabet project. So, so this is Final Cut Pro, and it's the program that we're going to be using. You can access it by going to your Finder, Applications, Final Cut Pro, and the icon looks like this. Um, once you double click it, you'll probably have an icon around the middle of your timeline, that's what this area is called, and it'll say New Project. You can also go to New Project by going to File, New Project. You want to name it your last name, your first name, your grade, and the name of the project that you're doing, which in my case is Top 30. In your case, it might be ABCs. So obviously, I'm using my pictures that I've collected from the internet. Um, I put them all in order here, and I'm just clicking and dragging them into my uh, timeline in the order that I want them. It's automatically going to put them in at ten, uh, four seconds each, and you could change that by just clicking and dragging on any one that you select. Okay, but I'm going to Command Z those actions because I want mine to stay four seconds for now. Um, I'm going to show you how to add text to your pictures, so I guess we don't need this any longer for right now. Although I did forget to put in my uh, honorable mentions, so I'll quickly drag those into here. You can see that they all just file in. 
So I'm going to X this out. For okay, now. so if you put your stuff in the right order, you could just drag them in singularly. But if you don't, if they don't go in in the right order, you could always grab them with your selection tool and just move them to the next place if you want to switch their places. Same thing works for text. And you could have several layers of images, but we'll talk about that in the next video. So don't set that up for now. Just keep them in a line. Now that I have all my pictures, the next thing I want to do is start adding my text. The first text um, I want on here is going to go over my introduction picture. And if you look at any of the things, oh, by the way, I selected this tool. If you um, look at your text tool and you look at any of the pictures here, all these little pictures, uh, the black indicates clearness, meaning that you'll be able to see a picture behind your words. So I purposely picked one of these pictures. I'm going to grab this one and put it on top of my uh, intro picture, and I'm going to make it so that the text uh, lasts about as long as the picture for now. I'm then going to make sure that my cursor, the white cursor here, is over um, the image that I want to show so I can see everything up here. And if I click this and highlight it, it'll allow me to change things about my text. So I can just drag a box over this and call this. And for each one, obviously, in this case, each text is separate, so I would have to choose each one. So you can see I have my title done. Uh, I also want to show you that if you have it selected, and you're using this tool, which by the way is the only tool that you should ever use in this program, for now at least, is your selection tool. So if you see it change, just go back here and click select. Um, other than this toolbar, which uh, it doesn't follow you. This is just the toolbar that's talking about the tools that will appear here. So um, anyway, once you have your words in, this is what it looks like right now, if I play it. So what I like about it is I like the way the, the uh, text moves. Um, what I don't like is that there's some areas where it's kind of hard to read. So what I can do is I can go over here and I can change the face of the letters. So I can just click right here and choose a different color and it'll change to whatever color I select. Um, however, none of these colors are working well because there's a multicolored background. So I'm going to keep my text white and instead I'm going to slide down even more to outline check my outline box, click show, and it's going to give me the option of putting a nice outline around it. Now, um, black outlined white text shows up on everything. So if we just change the width of that outline a little bit, it shows up really well. I can also move, in this case, different pieces of it to different places. So um, if I don't want to cover up certain areas of my image, I can just move things out of the way. So here's how it would look like if I played it right now. Pretty cool. All right, so if this goes further than my image, I could always change it. If I don't want it to last as long as my image, I could change that as well. But anytime you have text on the screen, you want it to last long enough that the person can actually read it before letting it fade away, um, your viewer. And sometimes your viewer is a little bit slower than you. So you might have to make slight judgments as you go to make it work for everybody. Um, now that I'm starting the next text, I'm going to choose a new text. You could stick with the same text all the time, but I sometimes like to change things. I'm going to bring in blur over here, and I'm going to show you some different features that you could use when you're working with text. First thing is, I want to have my cursor over it, and I want to have it selected before I bother to try and change it. Uh, this is number 10 for me. And since the word Darkwing Duck is already on the screen, I'm not going to repeat that information, but if it didn't say that, I'd want to name the show. So my viewers who might not know who Darkwing Duck is, I'm talking to you guys, um, chances are if I write it on there, they'll know. So I'm going to keep that on there. I'm also going to move this to wherever I want it to go. So I'm going to put this right around here. Now this text is kind of boring. It should be a little bit more exciting. So I want to change it. You can change it right here and you have the all these options. You want to pick something that obviously stands out against everything else. So I'm going to put it right about here. You Where you put it on the screen is up to you. Uh, know though that at the end there's probably going to be some movement that we add to this. So that might affect what you're seeing and you may have to make changes later. All right, but this is basically how uh, my project would start. Now that I have this number 10, I'm going to keep that theme going, and I'm just going to alt-click it to duplicate it onto Batman, and then I'm going to click so that my timeline, my cursor shows up here, and I'm going to make sure that I have this highlighted so that I can change it. I'm going to change my 10 to a 9. It's going to make it really easy to put text on all of these now by just duplicating them and changing it slightly. I'm also, being that this one doesn't have a name, I'm going to duplicate it again 
I'm going to hold down Alt and move it with the selection tool. And I'm going to be able to, which is also the move tool, by the way, in this program. And I'm going to be able to make a duplicate of it that are that are happening at the same time or close to the same time. And this way I could also write Batman the Animated Series. Okay, so that looks a little bit big. I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller so it could fit on my screen. And I'll move it to a place where you could see it. All right, looking pretty good. So here's what we have so far. I have my intro. That goes on to my number 10, and it both has the name of the character and the number. Same thing for here because I had to add it in this one, and so on. All right, I think you get the gist of how you're going to start this project.